Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life mister, segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo, woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Chris, put your phone away. Sorry. I, was... I have your favorite here, Chris <laughs> Frangiola. Woo! Coming in hot on a Monday yes. for our Tuesday show. Mm -hmm. I look extremely cute for you today. You do. You look very Easter, very spring-like. Uh, it's a great color. Yellow is a hot color for spring, I had read uh, somewhere. Thank a you. A yellow what? handbag, I heard. Forget that for spring. That's what I was looking for. Oh, really? I'm looking for a yellow handbag. I See? was in Dallas, Texas this past weekend. Okay. I went to the Trina Turk store. Where I get a little discount. Yeah. So I got these shorts and I paired it with this yellow uh, blazer today. And um, I was looking for a yellow purse. But well, the yellow purses that Valentino were just a little too expensive for me. You got to get one because it's all, it's the hot uh, thing to have this spring. I I'm going to go get it right now. Okay. Wait, you, you're good. Yeah. You're good, okay. Um, so, anyway, I had a great time in Dallas. Yes. So fun. And uh, so far, so good. It's, good. it's all good. We have so much Juicy Scoop to talk about with I'm you, I'm glad Chris. you'll be in, because I'll be in Dallas next oh, month. good. Yeah, Tell us. Yeah, I'll be in Dallas next month at Hyenas Comedy nice. Club in Dallas, Texas, May 14th and 15th. If you want to come see. So, Heather, now uh, see me. Absolutely. And Hyenas in Dallas. And you, that place is great, and you will have so much fun. It yeah. is like a different world over there, and it was a blast. I'm very excited, yeah. All right, let's talk about... Please explain to me, since you're my Juicy Scoop slash Longshoreman, <laughs> okay, what <yes. laughs> happened with this the, boat and being stuck in a canal? I'm so confused. The Suez Canal, yeah. Uh, one of the boats, one of the big shipping boats, okay. gigantic boat. Uh, if you could see how many crates it has on it. Uh, yeah. It turned sideways and blocked the whole canal. Somehow, like it fell on its side? No, it didn't oh. fall on its side. It slid, you know, it kind of sailed. Uh, instead of sailing straight, it blew sideways. Some people say it was error on the on the captain. Some people say the it was- Somalian The Somalian captain that's yeah. like said to Tom Hanks, I'm the captain now. <laughs> right. He wasn't- I think, I think they're also like, they have like a very skeleton crew because of COVID. So there's like 10 people working on the whole ship. So- <laughs> And it's just like, it's not like pirates that you would think. I mean, is it as stressful as an episode of Below Deck when they're trying to park the boat? I it, think so. Every episode they show the same scene of the anchor going down and then... The boat crashing into the dock. And, yes, and, and they're being a little, a little bit of a scrape and then throwing the rope in some... Always one episode, one time in every episode, the guy doesn't isn't able to grab the rope. Yeah. Um, did well, they have got, rope? What was the problem? I think it's a little bigger than rope, but it's. I think it's probably a chain, like a large chain. I don't know. I'm not. You know, I've, I've never been a boatsman, but uh, from what I've seen, it turned sideways and then it got stuck on the ground, and it's so heavy that oh, once it was it, already touching the ground. Yeah, it's such. So how did they get it out? I think they uh, I don't know, eventually just took some stuff off it or, or blew it up with some. I don't know. They, got, you know. they were able to raise the it. The point is, is it's fine now. It's out. You know what's kind of great? But when the, you the agree... ripple effect mm -hmm. of it could yes. last weeks and months because there was a lot of stuff. The other boats couldn't get through on either end. So everything oh. that was coming your way to maybe your Costco or your Target, that it's now been blocked. Uh, for 12% uh, of the world's economy was blocked by this boat for six days. But I feel like, you know... Sometimes it's just like you know Hold you see on. like scary news come yeah. on your phone right. and you just like want to ignore it. Yeah, I kind of ignored it, this whole boat thing because yeah. I was like, I can't, I don't know how to help this boat. They're like, we're trying to tug it out. It was so stressful that I just went to Highland Park and shopped instead. <laughs> no, this one was kind of fun. It was one of those stories that you could kind of have fun with, you know. Because but here's some things that that are that are gonna that were blocked. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna give you some items that were stuck for six days and I gotta take some time to get all to right, you. All right, give it to me. 80 containers of tea. There was 80. It was like the Boston yeah. Tea Party all over again. <laughs> so those giant drink of tea. I don't so drink tea. So whatever type of tea don't you care. drink. Don't, no? I don't drink tea. Not don't a Darjeeling care. or Earl Grey? Don't not a problem. even care about okay, tea. Okay, how about this? 110 containers filled with uh, Ikea furniture. 
So a ton of Ikea furniture was trapped. Also don't care. <laughs> Not going to be a problem. I don't know how to put stuff together. <laughs> what about like uh, shitty apartments for if you like when you first got your first apartment and, and you loaded it up with like shitty Ikea shelves? I never did it because I, I knew I would never be able to put the stuff together. <laughs> so I don't even try to go what down about, that route. What about the as is section of Ikea? You can go to the as is section and it's. It may have a scratch or a little something on it, but okay. it's assembled already for so you. So just anyone that shops at Ikea is screwed. Yeah, if you shop at Ikea and you're looking for whatever they okay, have. What else? Let me see if anything uh, else is affecting your life. And I also saw all instant coffee. <gasps> oh, no, not <laughs> instant coffee. Not instant. the Keurig. No, instant coffee. So like Sanka. Ew, Remember the who old, drinks that? My mother. <laughs> so my mother's weekend screwed for the next eight weeks. <laughs> if there are any grapefruits and cottage cheese on this boat, my mother's fucked. <laughs> she tried to drop a few. What about hard boiled eggs? It's hard boiled eggs and a and a and a ground beef patty <laughs> and a peach half. <laughs> Sorry. Have any diner. <laughs> if you ever went to a diner in the fair, 80s, that was yes, the diet plate. Yes. Oh, or you know what's also a really classy uh, thing to do at a diner when you're when you're having a lunch. Maybe she's trying to lose a few weight, but she's with your father. So yeah. she wants to get a uh, patty belt. <laughs> okay. She can get a half of a cantaloupe with cottage cheese in the circle. Yes. That's exactly. another popular one. There was, a, there was a very fancy diner on Long Island that did a shrimp salad in the cantaloupe. They, wow. <laughs> That's no, pretty. No, nothing sounds delicious like diner shrimp. <laughs> mm. uh, Chris, anyway. I will say I do remember a joke you had where you were. It was just one of those times. I think you're on the road. You wouldn't watch too many episodes of um, people catching fish. Yeah, and yeah. And you were like, why is fish not more expensive? <laughs> right. Like, they're risking the Deadliest like, catch. They're, they're doing risking. another season of Deadliest yeah. Catch. And it's like, right. the ship is around to run our air. I'm like, not only are they filming, like, how scary it is for these guys to get the fish. Right. But then you have the crew about to die. <laughs> and I'm, and like, I'm always like, do they know crab legs are six bucks at Red Lobster? <laughs> <laughs> risking their life. Uh, oh wow, people have fun. Those okay. Days. Well, that, anyway, so that's of, that's the ship, um, and it's, and it's okay. out, and it's and now everything's good again. So they're on the way. But will anything go bad? Well, that, like uh, that's sad if something. Uh, got there were spoiled. there was a lot of uh, fruit and stuff on some of the ships. There were some animals on some of the ships, but I think everything's fine. You know, they have their refrigerated boxes. I think animals. Yeah, they had a, a like lot of service livestock. Animals? Livestock. You know, they they cart it around. I don't know. Cows and there's cows on this ship. You think you know how much shit is on that ship? Well, why, Everything. Why would you have to ship a cow from another country? I don't think you're uh, right. Uh, no. Well, I look at I, I read the story today. There there's was, cows on the ship. They said animals. They didn't specifically this say is cows. Isn't Noah's I'm Ark? Assuming... What the fuck is this? <laughs> you know how much shipping is the entire world runs on ship. That's why anytime you see Paris Hilton like, dating like a Greek shipping magnate, even wasn't Onassis originally? Yes. Ship, that's there's so much money in shipping that you know, these are this is billions yeah, you're of right. dollars. It just feels so old fashioned. I know, somehow. but it is the only way to get things to places, you know. I guess you're right. Okay. Well, good that it's over with. Let's talk speaking of shrimp and fish. <laughs> yeah, here we let's go. Let's talk about the shrimp gate saga. This is crazy just to catch you guys up. Uh, we, we both have a lot of personal ties to this story. Which it's is not just that your mom liked shrimp salad. No, <laughs> no it is not. But. This guy claims that his last name is Carp. We'll just call him Carp. He claims that he bought a cinnamon toasted crunch from my home Costco. Woodland, Woodland Hills. Woodland Hills Com Costco. So if you're going to fuck with the 818... I'm yeah. gonna come for you too, Dick. Right. You're trying to tell me that any there's that is not the most beautiful brand new Costco there is. We do buy cinnamon toast crunch from there. It's our go to like fun cereal. Can I can I go just ahead. say something about that Costco? I yes. also now because I'm a little close to yes. that's a Costco I go to. Yes. And it's attached to a nice outdoor mall Woodland area. Woodland Hills Village. But I but the Burbank Costco I used to be able to go up and get the chicken bacon the pizza without my card. I was able to just approach the pizza area. Oh, that get... kids love that. Where you just get a big slice and it's enormous exactly. right outside. Yeah. But I used to be able to do it without my card because I wasn't accessing the actual. Okay. But that one, Woodland Hills is very strict. You can't you even get the pizza. You don't want non-members. I know. But I figured I'm just, I'm not even going inside. I'm just pizza outside. They don't let you even get the pizza no. with no card. I have a card. I mean, because I why should they give you a slice of pizza that essentially <clears throat> is about four slices of pizza, but for they charge you for 50. one. 
Also, Drake is obsessed with that the water bottles there are 25 cents. So he'll get a 25 cent doll, bottle of water. I mean, it's actually 25 cents for the... In the vending machine. Yeah. That's 25 cents for a bottle of water. And then the enormous pizza. The buck 25, yeah. Or churro. Yeah. But, okay. So he says he's having a cereal. Right. And in his cereal, he sees shrimp tails. There's a couple more details to the story. Keep going. Interrupt okay. as we go. Okay. Yeah. Just think... Now, it happened a couple of days ago. The story yeah. broke. I started seeing little bits about, you know, cin there was shrimp tails and a cinnamon toast crunch. I, who but cares? also there was like another, there was like a like right. sewing thread. Well, that's the next. Okay. So uh, I guess this is because it was Costco. He bought a large box of, he didn't get just a regular box. It's a two bagger. You right. probably know. Yes. You, it's a two bagger. So two boxes in one, one thing box, together. One box, two bags. Got yeah. it. One gotcha. box, two bags. Got it. Yeah. He buys that. His girlfriend is the girl from wife. Excuse me, is Topanga the girl from Topanga from, from Girl Meets Boy, Boy Meets World. Boy, right, and Her name she is also Fischelle. she also beat me out when I attested to be the host of the Dish, which was the girl version of the Soup oh. on the now defunct Style Network. Wow. Oh yeah, she was knocking around doing. I guess I remember she was on an E show while we were at that's what Chelsea it was. lately. No, that's yeah. what it was. Oh, but it was, it was on Style. Oh, okay. And yeah. it was the same people that did the soup, but it was called the dish. So she covered like more girly type shows, and that's and I tested for it. Okay. And she got it. And her name's Danielle. Guess who's laughing Fish now? Allen. Look who the fuck she married. I know. Keep going. Jensen Carp. His name's Carp. Her last name's Fishel. Yes. And there's shrimp in there. Thing. Okay. Anyway, that's just a crazy side note. A okay. lot of fish involved. <laughs> <laughs> Her last name is Fish Fishel. Fishel. Yeah, okay. Something like that. Didn't he also do a podcast that had the word shrimp in it? Yes. He shrimp shrimp pistols or something was his podcast. His own podcast. Uh with other people, yeah. But still that is weird. Yeah. Pistol shrimp or something. Anyway, that's a lot of coincidences. A lot of weird shrimp uh, tie-ins. So that more about, coincidences about... than the Cecil Hotel Netflix special. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, keep going. Which I could. So anyway, he, he gets he get gets it home and and sees it's shrimp tails. Yes, it looks like shrimp tails. I saw the picture. It looks like it shrimp absolutely tails. does. He sends that picture or somehow tweets the picture. General Mills sees the picture and goes, "Ha! They think it's a little fun banter they're having on Twitter." Yeah, you know, some tw obviously it's a girl who's she's not the CEO of General Mills. She's like their Twitter person. Yeah, and she's like that. It's just sugar clumped together. Okay. That's what she takes it to somebody in the factory and goes, is this shrimp tail? And the guy goes, no, it's sugar clumped together. And it could have been. Who okay. knows? Then this guy, everybody starts jumping on this this Twitter feed. It's crazy. People are jumping on like scientists, like bring it to me right. and I will put it in the lab. Didn't he also take a photo of the supposed shrimp tails next to actual shrimp tails to show everybody how they are the same thing? They look exactly the same. I just saw the one picture of the shrimp tails. Uh, both with the and how did the sewing string get in there? Too? Well, that was another. So then he started, yeah. you know, looking in Doubling the other down. bag. Yeah, and the other his wife, he said, had a stronger stomach than he did. Uh, so Panga, so she opens the other bag, and I guess there's all sorts of things in the other bag. There's string. There's you know weird shit. But I guess I don't know. I never really looked that closely at my okay. cereal, you right? Know, to note it. But then he also looked took pieces of the of the actual cinnamon toast crunch and said there's things baked into the. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, like, I don't know, it looked like it's, uh, it's called rat shit. It's called delicious. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. Like, just eat it and shut up. <laughs> I mean, who looks? Like, just you just Now he's saying there's in. rat shits in the wedges of the... He, and he, these are all... He's got photographic okay. evidence or whatever okay. of all this stuff. So, uh, anyway, so now there are... There are scientists involved. They're saying that they're going right. to take it to the lab. They're going to look it over. And he's writing stuff like, how dare you gaslight me, General Mills? Right, like, they now I'm pissed. Saying, now I'm doubling down. Yeah. 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 And he's a writer. Turns out, I this guy's Jensen Carp has been around forever. He's, he's written on James Corden. I know him a little bit. He executive produced Do you Drop. know him personally? I don't know him personally, but okay. I know you know he's yeah. been around the stand-up circuit yeah. a little bit and, okay. and TV writing and... He, he, he produced, I believe he's somehow involved in The Masked Singer, mm. executive producing or somehow, and a thing called Drop the Mic. I don't know if you remember, it was like a James Corden right, we have show. Yeah, we have some stuff on Drop the Mic because that's okay. where the a girl comes right. in. Okay, but so. also he in one of his tweets, he was like, I'm an Emmy, I'm an Emmy nominated writer. Mm. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, so throwing yeah. that in. So he's loving that people, and he goes, and he started out with, this is not a bit. So if you didn't know he was a comedian, 
You're right. like, oh, he is a comedian, but he claims this is not a. But bit. he's also been a comedian who's who's prone to stunts a little bit, which okay. is why some people are like, is this another stunt? Because he he was a, a rapper as a child, and he wrote a book. Kanye West produced him or something, and okay. Kanye West owes him money, and he wrote a book about Kanye owing him money. So he does stunty shit. Right. So some people was like, is this just another stunt? Anyway, so now it starts to swing the other direction. Yes. This guy's like, isn't this a cutesy fun thing about shrimp tails and cinnamon toast crunch? And now some girls, some yes. female write- writers, Melissa Stetton, who I know a little bit. She's been around forever. She writes, she tweets as this is going down. What you may not know about the man behind the viral posts, what like he's a manipulative, gaslighting, narcissistic ex-boyfriend who once told me he was surprised I hadn't killed myself because my life was so worthless. Sounds like a real delight. Yeah. Yeah. So she's saying that. And then other girls said the Bunch same thing. Another on. one said that um, he screamed and yelled at me and blocked me and broke up with me and blocked me because I wasn't excited about the surprise threesome he sprung on me. Yeah. I heard that. Um, yeah. J- uh, just that he was awful. That he screamed right. at his girlfriends, gaslight him, make them feel that they were always doing something wrong, that they had to apologize to him, that he played the victim. Just like, um, and And then then we get into this other stuff. Yeah, go ahead. ahead. So then he did this, he had this gallery called Gallery 1988. And it's kind of confusing. I don't know if it was like, um, like uh, live art where it's it's like, I think it's real art, but then also like, um, what do you call it? Like where you're kind of acting out the art or something. Uh, He had something uh, to do with that. Performance art. So this person writes, she was the manager of that place, Gallery 1988, and said that while she managed the venue, she witnessed Carp completely screw an artist out of any profit from a solo show that was a culmination of a year's worth of paintings. Uh, Withheld the name of the artist, citing their prop. Oh, she uh, withheld the name. But anyway, claimed that Carp convinced them to create a show around a certain intellectual property, which Carp wanted to work with down the road. However, right before the show, Carp was allegedly concerned that the show would jeopardize his potential chance of getting an officially licensed show with the property. So he basically blocked the sales of the artwork by not displaying the prices on the show and the cards so people could not purchase the pieces at the website either. So, um... That, that was screwed. Then the other person that's telling awful stories about him is Eliza Skinner. Eliza Skinner, who is a comedian, I know, uh, and a writer. And she all, now, what they had originally said in the article was it was like an article in one of the magazines, one of those Daily Beast, I think. They said she dated him. And she wrote back, like on Twitter, like, don't you dare say I dated this prick. Like, I worked for him and it was the worst experience of my life. So then I saw that's how I started okay. to see all the other. So, anyway, what I don't Well, know what, what was she basically? So, she worked on the show Drop the Mic. Yeah. It was a comedy rap battle show that aired on TBS and was produced by CBS and all these production companies. And they, um, so that she was doing it for three seasons. And she basically just said he was awful, yeah. that he would scream at her. Um, and she was sort of like protecting the other writers from him. And he'd scream like, get in my office, instead of like just walking over there. I mean, she wasn't his you know, assistant or secretary. And um, she tried to tell her people like he's verbally abusive and they said, oh, just work it out with him. And so then she did sit down and he tried for a minute, but then he went right. back to his old ways. And, and this they, is for now, Baron. This is for drop the mic. This is not for like The Sopranos or some amazing yeah. show where it's you know you're under pressure to make a great script. This is for a stupid like rap battle. Right. Well, I don't know if but the stress of it. of it though was, she says he pushed for really racist yes, jokes. Yes, that's what I heard. Another a black. I heard a black uh, writer, a female writer, say she was the only, which she thought was strange. I'm the only black person on a show about rap, mm-hmm. which is strange. Uh, and she said the same thing. She was like, are you really going to do like Asian, like hardcore Asian jokes on, I guess there were two Asian people rapping against each other. And he was like, yeah, it's funny. And that's what we're doing kind of thing. So but yeah. she said, she also said he, you weren't allowed to talk to him. It was like one of those things where he was off in an office and. If you were summoned to right. go see him, it was the only time you could speak to him. And then, being that Eliza, Eliza's a comedian, Eliza Skinner and, and a writer, she was really offended by the fact that he would take their jokes and make them less funny. Right. And kept going for, like, the lowest denominator of jokes, which was, like, all black people look alike and stuff yeah. like that. And saying, and saying, oh, I got these two black celebrities mixed up, and they didn't look at all alike, even remotely, you know? Right. And so it was just really, you know, offensive to her and... And he just was would double down on it. 
And um, so she hated working for him. And eventually, oh, eventually she even got fired after the third season. She hadn't even quit. Um, but yeah, she routinely replaced lines about black celebrities with um, about how they just looked alike. And they look like other black celebs, and they did not at all resemble. I expressed discomfort with this several times. But again, he never spoke to us, so I had to shuffle this through the head writer. His feelings was that it's part of the rap battle culture. Like, What does he know about rap? Well, he was a rapper. Like, a, like as a child, he was a rapper. Oh, from, I okay. don't know. The whole thing is just, I mean, this guy's obviously some sort of asshole, you know, which so, is nothing new in Hollywood. You know, we've, so been, we've been there. So what do you think happened? Now, he's disappeared. He won't do statements. He's disappeared off of Twitter. And I think I think the fascinating thing about this in our culture right. is this now has happened so many times. Where right. all of a sudden, someone's just sitting on their bed during the pandemic, and they whip out their phone, eating cereal, and eating, and they, yeah, yeah and or, no, like what he did oh, is one oh, thing, okay. but the all of a sudden, someone's just like, "Is no one going to talk about what an asshole Ellen is?" You know, like there's right, been so many right, of those things, right. or the Me Too, like hashtag Me Too. Why don't you share your story when yeah. that started with Alyssa Milano? Like, I mean, I, it's like it's amazing, and so you put yourself out there. You better make sure there isn't someone sitting on a bed that's bored right. that's going to say something. Because the minute one person says anything, it opens the floodgates for everyone else to be like, oh, I guess it is safe to expose this asshole. I uh -huh. mean, it really is a time of exposing assholes. Yeah. And it's like, who is going to be that first person that opens the floodgates? And this one, one girl did, and the rest followed, and then people that professionally worked with him followed. And now he's done. I, do you think he's done? Or, I mean— yeah. Is it any I kind of think so. Yeah. Would you want to work with him? I mean, I, I don't want to work on the rap battle show anyway. So, you know, but I mean, the other thing is, which is kind of a weird. He said that one of the bags was taped up and they had a picture of that as well. So which brings me back to a time when I went to Costco. And I know you guys were big on taking things back to Costco. And I went yes. to get the card. I had to get a new card. I, was, I moved up to a different status, to a gold I, status. Oh, uh, we're platinum. Whatever, I'm not. Whatever. Oh, I'm Okay. Whatever, it's not about competition. <laughs> I'm just saying it's... What does platinum get you? Peter, what does platinum get us? I think it's just executive. You get a Visa card. Oh, you yeah. get a Visa card, okay. I think I have that it's pretty. As well. It's pretty nice. Oh, I'm just saying, as okay. a platinum member, I still couldn't Do get a Visa. You think someone piece. returned it? There's no way they would have put it back on the shelf. Well, when I was there getting my platinum card, I saw a box of frosted mini wheats on the return shelf. So somebody... You know, you kind of know what you're getting when you go and force the mini wheats. I was surprised that someone went, "These are not the mini wheats." I <laughs> take the back. You know, like at that well, point, you just kind of eat. You, you, you didn't I feel like it. frosted uh, mini wheats always taste stale. So I think they probably had it and just said, "These are fucking stale." Right. And then they just and then had a husband like a Peter. Yeah. And and made the, but, I I won't do the returns. But Drake what and Peter have to do it. But what I'm saying is, Did okay, that Peter, would you would you return a box of like cinnamon toast crunch if I you return wine? Wine, really? You can return. We wine? did. We did return wine. Like you already you said, this is not good. No, we drank a half. We were drinking this bottle, half a bottle, and he was like, "Just doesn't taste the way I remember it." I go, oh, oh at like the winery <laughs> in Napa Valley, because you know, whenever you do a wine tasting, right. why does the wine at a wine tasting at a beautiful winery when it's like sunny out? Tastes yeah. so much better. And then you buy like 12 balls and you get them home and then you open it on a Tuesday and you're like, this <laughs> not Zinfandel spot. is shit. Like, what was I thinking? So basically he was acting like that. And I, and he said, just return this. Like as I'm going, he goes, yeah. return it. I go, I'm not, this bottle is $6. It's Kirkland yeah. Napa Valley Winery. Like so whatever. So cork back in, back to yes. the Woodland. <laughs> and they, and the thing is, they will not take back alcohol that has not been opened. So if you bought three cases for a wedding, yeah. okay, and then you only went through one. You could not take back those two cases that have never been touched. Is that because but of COVID or is that always their rule? That's always COVID been, and I don't understand. Yeah. But if it's opened because you didn't like it, they will take it back. Oh, okay. So they took it back. Wow. And what's weird is Drake returned it, and he's, you know, at the yeah. time was like 16. <laughs> he's just like, I don't, this didn't give me, yeah. give me the buzz I was looking for. <laughs> Wow. All right. So So that could have happened, but okay, do we think this was all bullshit? Do you think we he was eating shrimp shrimp coconut shrimp earlier that day and saw something in the cereal that looked like a tail and then went for this thing 
and it really was like a little yeah. cinnamon crunchy thing. But then he took the photos with the tails and everything, and then was in so deep. Like this is a little bit not obviously right. not as bad of a crime as Jesse Smollett, but it's a little Jesse it's Smollett. Ju- it's getting Jesse Smollett. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. getting a little like. I went down this road and a whole fuck, like now I cannot right. say I lied. I know. I don't I don't think so. Yeah. It just seems weird that he would go through all this trouble because who knew it was going to catch fire like this, but it turns out it did. I think he, because, okay, I think there's a lot of things that go in people's subconscious. Right. Where you see something and then you see how something goes viral, viral or someone becomes famous, like Gorilla Glue. Oh, yeah. He's so not... people even compared this at the beginning before they exposed yeah. him what a dick he was. People were like, oh, my God, this is just like the Gorilla Glue girl who put the Gorilla Glue in her yeah. hair to keep her wig on and all that her crazy story. Yeah. So, yeah, I think he might have been like, what's the harm of it? Maybe not thinking like you are kind of screwing with like a huge company. Yeah. And you're also, if it goes viral, you're putting yourself out Two there. Two huge think, companies, because now Costco, I mean, yeah. you know, they've kind of been taken in. People are like, are they putting stuff back on their shelves that's taped together? So I think they're kind of off the hook a little bit, but right. they, there was talk of that a little while, too. So um, Basically, what I had heard was it might have been a rat. That's somehow rats, you know, they make a little nest. And they said the rat perhaps was in the General Mills factory making a little nest in the whatever flour they use or cinnamon. And the rat was going into the trash of the bathroom of – this is what I had. Yeah. Right? Of the bath. Somebody in yeah. the General Mills had had shrimp okay. in the bathroom. Hold on. <laughs> okay. This is I, I I went a deep dive on this. Okay, story. so they think there's so, a rat hanging out. In the General that Mills. That may or may not been employed on rap battle – no, he wasn't. When, a, yeah, <laughs> it's I don't, too, the the rat is still pissed that he worked on a horrible right. TBS show that yeah. nobody watched. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And he had to do racist lines. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, yo! This guy looks like that guy. What? You can't say that. <laughs> so the rat's living its life at the General Mills factory. Yes, and he is. And I guess one day somebody had some shrimp in the bathroom of the General Mills factory. The rat went into the garbage that night, found the tails. But maybe someone was eating the shrimp in the bathroom because a lot of people have a big problem with people heating up any kind of fish in in, right. the, in the microwave. Point. So like that person's like, "Fuck! I just don't want to get shit anymore." But I did. I do He's have great- this really yummy like shrimp. You know, Asian dish. Yeah. So I'm going to uh-huh. heat it up and I'm just going to sit by myself in the bathroom <laughs> right. and listen to Juicy Scoop yeah. and eat my shrimp. So she eats her shrimp. Sounds like a lovely afternoon. <laughs> she eats her shrimp and she throws it in the bathroom trash can. Yes. Now, why do they think the rat was hanging out in the bathroom, though? I don't know. That's what I had heard. Okay, they, so they the, believe rat the rat goes in the bathroom. And I guess and the takes... rats, what they do is they forage. You know, they, they bring everything back to their nest. So they and think that's where all the, like, the, sh- the sh- thread came from. Okay, They're... so the rat takes... This leftover shrimp and some sewing thread because the girl was also yeah. like sewing like her son's badge on his Cub yeah, Scout uniform. Right, right. And takes that and runs back into the cinnamon. Into the cinnamon. Re- Burrows into the cinnamon with everything okay. that he found in the bathroom. Okay. And then just they, got full and left the rest of the stuff falls there. Asleep. <laughs> falls asleep. And then someone the next goes. Day. So the next day, someone takes a scoop of cinnamon right. to mix it all That's together. It. That's it. You got it. But good. What's that other commercial that you always see? That girl, it's honey, honey uh, toasted. I think it's honey nut Cheerios. Okay. And she's like supposedly it's a commercial, and she works at a factory. <laughs> yes. And she sure. has like a bonnet no, on her right. head, yeah. and she's like, everyone says I smell so good when I come back from right. working at the factory. I'm just glad it wasn't that cereal. Honey bunches of oats. Honey bunches. Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't honey bunches of oats because I think that woman's life would be worse off than this guy's because yeah. they yeah. would have been like i know who works at honey bunches of oats she's, she's been she's been that lady for right. so long okay so they take a scoop of the cinnamon the shrimp tails are in there the rat is like just like taking Where a nap is off yeah. yeah yeah and then made a made a batch yeah they made a batch right exactly so they believe that's how it might have gotten in that's that was one theory that i had heard which was, it was like from a scientist who's it was like a rat expert Oh my God! Like a, that could have happened. Yeah. Or he could have fucking did it. That and there's that. You know. Could what be this do guy. you think it is? I think it. I think it. I don't think they were rat uh, shrimp tails. I don't. I haven't read the latest. Uh, yes. Because I think he sent them to a lab or something. I think it was some sort of you know. Uh, All the cinnamon, cinnamon collaborated yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. I think he was eating a bowl <clears throat> of c- right. cinnamon toasted crunch. 
And he goes, what is this? And it looked like a shrimp tail, but he kind of knew it wasn't. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, my God, look how much this. There were two, though. Okay, look how much this looks like. Right, there could be two. Look how much this looks like um, uh, shrimp Shrimp. tails and stuff. And then in his head, he was just like, yeah, I'm going to just, I don't know. Fuck it. He, was, do he this. Just, basically it was on Twitter. He just posted I'm just a picture do that. saying, I'm "Yeah, do hey, this. cinnamon toast crunch." And I don't think sh- he was like, "If I do this, and this goes viral, are all the girlfriends that I was horrible to before finding Topanga?" And by the way, how weird it is if they lived in Topanga because Topanga is the street. <gasps> it's on Topanga. Oh no, my God, Costco is on Topanga. It's, yes, that's another crazy part. This of This is ridiculous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So- anyway. That's that's what I think. I think I don't think the rat did this. Okay. Well, but um, I have the rat rat population will be happy to know that you have. uh... I have the rat here. (laughs) Hey, listen. Hey, listen. No offense to your teeth, but can we just do a quick improv of you as the rat? We found the rat. Uh huh. We got an exclusive. It it, the rat what the rat was gonna go to. to Montecito, minutes. no Montecito, oh. Oh. and sit outside with Oprah, but I got the rat first. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hello, Heather. I love Juicy Scoop. I'm, a, I'm an uh, first time listener, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> rat, yeah. how long have you been hanging out uh, been in the bathrooms at the General Mid Mill Factory? <laughs> I have been in that General Mill for. Uh, about two and a half years now. I used to be over at Nabisco. Oh, and really? things would, things would look crazy over there and like what they were doing. Uh, the, a lot of the the <laughs> things were not my taste. So I went over to uh, General Mills and things were great. We're having a good time. The people, a lot of you people in the bathroom. <laughs> Why is your rat slightly Donald Trump? <laughs> a lot of people eating the bathroom. <laughs> great operation. Great it's, people. They're, they're wonderful people. They're good people. <laughs> I love shrimp. I, I don't know. I don't know why it went that way. I don't know what a rat sounds like. So if the uh. rat was here, um, <laughs> oh, my God. That uh. rat only knew that in the end yeah. he did a Christian thing because now we know that this guy's an asshole. Right, exactly. Well, another asshole has been exposed. Very but he good. should have probably just, like many of us would have done, taken the shrimp tails out and probably just finished. Oh, and then, see, uh, whatever, uh, General Mills did offer him another box for free. <laughs> and he would have taken that. He would have probably worked in Hollywood for the next 30 years. Just take the free box and move on. Be the, I think the lesson is this. Yeah. Before you tweet something, mm-hmm. whether it's a joke, whether it's something about your kid, about you, someone you know, someone you you know, or even like, oh, I remember an example of a woman um, who she was, she was now she's married to a former Real Housewives husband. But she was so angry that someone was asking to look at her receipt at Walmart oh. that she filmed the woman asking to look for her receipt. Yeah. So, and put it out on Facebook thinking that everyone would be on her side. Like, how awful, what awful little customer service you got. That they were accusing you of stealing. Yeah. But the exchange was really quite abusive to the poor woman working there. Right. And so sometimes you think you're putting something out and you're like, the whole world's going to be on my side. And no, they're not. So you really yeah. have to think about Same it. Same thing. Remember the girl who uh, took a picture of the guy from the Cosby show working at Trader Joe's? Yes. She's like, this guy's working at Trader Joe's. What a loser. She, she thought it was going to be cute and be funny. And everybody was like. Fuck you. You know, this guy's trying to, you know, make a living and blah, blah, blah. There was another girl. Uh, yes. The, the girl in the, the gym, gym. The old lady in the gym. She was like a Playboy Playmate or something. She took a photo of a naked body in the gym. Yeah. Like, An crossed out woman. her, like, what, like, crossed out her, like, her crotch. But just that it, you know, whatever. It was like a six year old woman at the gym trying to, like, work out, bitch. Yeah. And was like, I can't unsee it. So now you can't either. Right. And that was the end of her, like, he'd done her career. Right. Like, whatever career she had is over. Anyway, Who was the other girl careful. that was angry at the tow truck um, place? She worked for like ESPN. And I don't think she filmed it. I think they filmed it. But her car had been taken by a tow truck place and she was trying to get her car back. Yeah. And she was just totally verbally abusive to the poor woman that's like, look, I didn't pick up your car. You, you're the one who parked at the wrong place. Like, 
hold on. And she was like, you have no education. I'm smart, you know, and it was just a really abusive thing. Oh, I don't remember that one. It was like kind of the, the start of like white privilege asshole. Because she was just a blonde girl that probably had no, probably why she was on ESPN anyway. It's not like she's, you know, some former football player. I don't know. Yeah. But apparently, you know, they like like a cute girl that can talk. Right. Whatever, I'm kicking sorry, yeah. or stats. Um, remember, remember the the little blurb of uh, Reese Witherspoon? That was like an original one, which oh, she was like, "Do you have any yes. idea who I am?" To the cop or something. Do you have any idea? You're about who... to find out. She said because her her second husband got arrested yeah. for a DUI, and she was in the passenger seat or something. And she said something along the lines of, "Do you know who I am? You're about to find out." You know what I just looked up because uh, yeah. somebody was talking about this latest story. We're going to get into Sharon Osbourne. Um, yeah, but. I was like, wait a minute. Someone said, and what about who else? What about Whoopi Goldberg being um, racist? And someone said, how is Whoopi Goldberg oh. racist? And I said, oh, she dated Ted Danson. Who went and, and did they blackface. went together as a couple, and he went in blackface. At the Friars Roast. Yes. Yeah. And said all these. I looked at, I just reread the story. Yeah. Like, it is so bad. The things he said, and like talking about mixed race children and the N word a million times. Yeah. And there were all these, you know, black celebrities that were there that were friends of hers. And, you know, some people were like, no, that's the whole point. We're supposed to be edgy and he's dating a black woman. Right. And, and but I mean he really did the black fi- like the mis- with the white oh, like, the whole it. thing. And well, he's the mayor of Los Angeles now. On his, it's, on his yeah, sitcom. Yeah. Nobody seemed to care he about that. He has not that. stopped working in Not stopped years. working, and neither has she. Yeah, right, exactly. And they just were like, sorry, you know, we didn't think it would hurt people's feelings, and, you know. I think also people kind of gave that one a little bit, because it was a fr- roast, where suppo- like, especially Friars roast, and it wasn't televised. It was like, I re- so, But I it, remember seeing photos of it. Yeah, there were photos of and it. And I was just like. I don't think you were supposed to have cameras in the, like, there. Yeah, it wasn't like the Oscars yeah. or something, anyway, but it was so, a big gathering of people. Yeah, I I think maybe for that reason it was a little uh they let him off the hook a little bit because it you're also supposed it, to be also it was hard. like 15 years ago and that stuff was okay but oh yeah <laughs> back then it was fun everyone was having a good time jeez yeah. what's going on yeah kind of such a humor thank god i've never done like any of like um like blackface or anything but, like a halloween costume because i know that's what people do you know some people are I have friends who, you know, I went to Tiger Woods. All right, go ahead, My friend you. just sent me a photo um, of herself at a sorority party that we that we all went to. Yeah. I was not in it, but I remember the part. And she is in an Indian. Yeah, that's another that's American Indian. Indian. And she goes, Sexy my, my daughter would absolutely kill me if she finds this photo. Right. And everybody has done sexy Indian at one time or another. Sexy and Indian. It, this two Halloween's ago, I went to Party City. In, yeah. In a. West Hills, and it was day of. I was scrambling to get an outfit together. The only stuff left was the Indian stuff. Yeah, no one was buying it. They knew not to buy it in West Hills. Well, for the first you know eight years of my childhood as a trick or treater, I don't. I was hobo, and I don't even know if you could do hobo. Could you do hobo anymore? Did you do hobo? Well, no. We but yet put... I know about the hobos. Yes, yeah. you were basically a homeless person, but you can't call them homeless. Yeah, you put person. charcoal on you your call face. Them, um, what do you call them? Hobos. Now? No, but now we call them something else. Oh, I don't know. This Suburban. Place. Yeah. Urban dwellers. Ur- urban oh, dweller. or no, urban campers. <laughs> oh, okay. Urban campers. Whatever. So I was... you were an urban camper. <laughs> okay, sure. We were going straight hobo at the time. It was. It was did you acceptable. Act, did you also have like an empty bottle of liquor? Were you like a, like a drunk? Hobo? Maybe I think my brothers might have put a little more uh, effort into their character backstory. I just went straight hobo. You know, just. And my mother used to burn a cork. We we wouldn't use charcoal. She'd burn like a cork from wine, I guess, on the stove, and then to get the black, and then do the put the burning hot cinders on her faces. <laughs> <laughs> no, different I, time, different times. I was um, just a a farmer, like a. But didn't you? Weren't you a prostitute? Well, I was a farmer one year, and then the next year I was a streetwalker. I was a hooker <laughs> on roller skates. That was third grade. <laughs> And I told my mom that. And she was like, okay. Yeah, like, right. it was fine. And then I was like, a hooker three years in a row. And then finally, some other mother is like, what are you? And I said, I'm a hooker. <laughs> and she's like, I'm like 11. And she's like, um, I don't think I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm like, what's up with this nerd mom? <laughs> and that, I don't know. That I, yeah, but it was, it was weird. Okay, so Sharon Osbourne, yeah. as predicted, 
will not be returning. I knew she wouldn't return. I kind of wondered, are they going to cancel the whole, whole show? But it appears, no, the show is coming back April 12th. Who are they going to get to replace her? God, do they need anybody? No, but I, I mean, mean, it's so instead of five people, it's four. If they get somebody big, it would be it would be good. You know, and, and more people. I wonder would if watch. people. I wonder if someone big would even want to <clears throat> risk it because what yeah. happened was she was on live television, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's totally live, but it's day of. Yeah. And and uh, you know, looking at the whole thing, what everything I've read and everyone's opinion that I've read. I think it was such a gross turn off to see the way she was speaking to Cheryl Underwood, yeah. who was being really classy and really nice. And then she's like, and don't you cry. I should be the one who's crying. And then it was that kind of like privilege. It wasn't even really, I mean, of course there was the element of like the racist, you know, is she racist? Is she defending a racist friend? Right. But it's like, you know, here, first of all, has so Cheryl I, Underwood spoken about it? She she had spoken about it on her podcast right in the beginning. And yeah. was just like, I was really shocked. I feel really bad. I was trying to explain to my friend. Right. And I wasn't attacking her like that. And so, you know, it was but it was a sensitive subject in this and that. But, um, yeah, I think that with this whole thing, it's just it's like, hey, here's another tip to people out there. If your friend has stepped in a pile of shit. Just let them clean their shoe off themselves. They're not in quicksand. Ooh, I like that one. They, did you come up with that one yes, yourself? Yes, I did. I like They're that not one. in quicksand. Yeah. Okay? So you don't have to possibly risk your life, crawl on your stomach, and get them out of quicksand. Right. However, I've only seen quicksand in movies. I but, don't think yeah, I don't think it really exists. Yeah. Or like a, a lake where you ice skating and then it cracks. Oh, that That always happens happen. in movies, too. Yeah. Now, those people you want to save. Okay? Yeah. But if someone's just stepped in some shit, just step back. Right. You do not need to defend them, make a statement, nothing. Yeah. Like, just let them know, hey, I'm sorry you're going through this. Um, it'll all work itself out. Something like that. Just so they know that maybe you didn't completely abandon them, but also I'm not going to help you. So what exactly did she say about Piers Morgan? She, she said, said, I said, side okay, with what he so said? Or he, she said, you know, he basically, we know the story. He tried. Uh, to, that all This I is what I think. He tried. He didn't. He loved Meghan Markle in the beginning. Right. He found their friendship on Twitter when she just had suits. He was like the only person watching it. Right. So she comes to and she's like, yeah, I'll go meet Pierce Morgan. Like he's a huge star. They meet or whatever, have drinks. The next, then he jokes for all, the next day she met Harry. And then he proceeded to text her and, and, you know, or tweet her and she ignored him. Yeah. And I think he was okay with it until she became the princess. And then he was pissed because he's like, I knew you when you were on Suits and I was a delight. And now you're going to bigger journalists and, and people like Oprah and they're in, you're inviting them to the wedding. You don't have to invite them to the wedding, but like, really, I'm in England. I can't get one little exclusive with you on Good Morning Britain. Right. Like, I'm not like a, a, a nobody. So I think he started to get more and more pissed. And then when she attacked the royal, not attacked, but then when she shared her truth about the royal family, mm -hmm. he was like, I don't believe it. Yeah. I don't believe it, but what people got really offended about is that the he said, thing. I don't believe that she ever was at the point of trying to kill herself. Yeah. Which you can't say that, and I agree with that. So then he got mad and he left. So when they talked about it, she was trying to say, so then people said, he's racist. And she was like, look, he's not He's not racist. He's a royalist. He cares about the royal family, so he's kind of protecting the royal family. And in that case, he's pissed at Meghan Markle. Right. I, the only way I related to Piers in this whole thing is the fact that I was not a royalist, but I was a Kardashianist. Yes. Sure. And I defended so that similar. family, and I had them come on, you know, when they came on Chelsea Lately. I always, you know, yeah. did everything, and we were friends and everything. And I accepted the fact that we got the massive cut from the Christmas party. I would have done it years prior. Uh -huh. I didn't have clout. I was six deep. My uh -huh. mother-in-law fell. The boys fought in the snow. Courtney went and said, I knew it was going to be my last time. <laughs> I was like, I can't. I, every year I was like, I can't believe I'm still getting invited. Like, I'm, yeah. so, I'm like not even on TV anymore. Sure enough, they cut me. I was fine with it until I saw that Kathy Griffin was invited. Yeah. And I, so I was like... You're inviting another female comedian that has literally shit on your family right. for the first 10 years, the first 10 seasons of Kardashians. She just ripped on you and said awful things about you. Yeah. And now 
she gets to go to the party. And then someone said, well, she's only one person. And maybe she brought like, a, you know, an assistant or something. Cause I don't think she had her boyfriend at the time. Maybe she had her boyfriend. And I said, I, I tried to make it very clear. I would dump my family on Christmas Eve. Okay. Right. I absolutely sure. still will do it next year yeah. too, Chris. Um, so I got that kind of like know. angry, but I still am not, you know, I'm not going to go attack them afterwards, yeah. but I was like, okay, but that I got how like, really, you know, and you right. have all these other journalists in England that you like, you're giving exclusives to, okay. but not me. Yeah. So then she's like, look, my friend's not a racist. He was just pissed about that. And then she felt, Sharon, that by them continuing to ask her, which then she also claimed, I wasn't prepped for this. They're saying, yes, you were. You knew we were going to talk about this. That then she felt, you're going to, now you're paying me to be a racist. Oh, okay. And when okay. she's like, I'm not racist. And then she did that tweet, like, I love the black community. And it's yeah. like, maybe mm, don't. <laughs> right. That's a little, that's always seems very racist when you do that. Yeah. Like, I, I, my best friend was right. black. Yeah. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, so then all the stuff came out about all the other things she said about it. Ozzy people. Osbourne was in Black Sabbath. Wow. She should have said that. <laughs> I don't know if that, yeah. Um, but the more and more stories come out that as a music manager, person that she was before the Osborne. She yeah. was very awful. No, a lot of people have said that. I know really Billy difficult. Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins speaks very uh he doesn't like her at all. Yeah. Um and a lot of a lot of musician people have said that. So right. I don't know. I think she'll move on to something else, right? Well Well the thing is is that she's got plenty of money. But God, she does love the fame. Oh, she yeah. She loves hearing herself speak. She liked doing, you know, America's Got Talent. She's done so many shows. And I think even at one time before the talk, she might have even had her own talk show herself, I want to yeah. say. Like, she's been given so much opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for someone who really doesn't have the credentials. But what people liked is that she was dirty, spoke dirty. When you think about it, like, she marries this guy who's a, a drug addict. He's had literally, she's walked in on him having sex with people and yeah. a million drug rehabs and she, and relapses. And the latest one, he, she, he was cheating with his hairdresser and that was very public while she was on the, the talk. And she just continued to enable him. And so I'm like, is she really like that someone to aspire to be? Right. Like, I think it's fine. She's, she'll be fine. Yeah. But I don't... It, it's a. It's not great when you go out like that and you're that old. I'm like telling you, got away you, with it. What do you think? I think more and more it's making sense to uh, produce my show called Cancel House because now I think there are people who would do it. Yes, Pierce Morgan would 100% be in Cancel House okay. with her. They could do even Cancel Table, where it's like a like it's like the talk with. I think Five. that's basically red table talk. That's where people go. To but they go to just one. It's one shot. Just to redeem themselves. It's just to get like the like, aunt, the aunt over there. The you grandma. Know, the gra but isn't there isn't there another person too? There's there's Jada Pinkett. There's the grandma. There's another person. There was a great meme of the three of them. It's the it's Jada, her daughter. Oh, oh, it's, and the uh, grandma. Oh, so the it's grandma. Three okay. generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Uh, there was the queen sitting there, yeah. queen of England. And it's like, I think we know. So obviously Sharon's going to maybe go there next. Right. Um, but I don't think at this point, I don't think Sharon's going to try to Oliva jade it and say, I just wasn't aware of my actions. She's double down. Yeah. She's not going to admit that she's ever had any poor behavior or no. Right. She's just going to disappear with her money for a minute until she starts her podcast Right, exactly. And then uh, yeah. she'll be back with Pierce Morgan. Why don't they do it together? Or I think Pierce is supposed to do some other show. Someone said that, like, Richard Murdoch is having a network and he yeah. kind of already had a deal. So this Rupert. was kind of a Rupert. Rupert. This was already his way of getting out. Yeah. Of course, she was making probably so much more money than the other hosts. Yeah. That um, because she's been there so long and because she's kind of the face of it and she's the only original one. They were kind of like, mm, this is our way to get her out. Throw in someone that we can pay one tenth of, yeah. and the ratings won't really change. Right. All right. I like it. I like. I, mean, I do you think I there's anyone get... at home that's been watching the talk yeah, every we day? Need, we need that's to like, see. I will never watch again. I mean, I'm yeah. sure there's a few tweets like that, but really, we need Sharon's opinion on things. Yeah. yeah. No, it'll be fine. So goodbye, Sharon. Um, this is kind of a funny thing that happened in the Real House where. Wife's world. So Lisa Vanderpump was has her show called Overserved, and somebody asked her. It's like a dinner party at her house. Mm -hmm. Has any um, buddy ever been banned from your restaurants? Okay. And she said, you know, no, but there was one, you know, housewife that uh, 
aunt didn't really pay her bill and, you know, and, and walked out on the bill. And then Tori Spelling says, oh, I remember this. This is Kelly Dodd. So Kelly sees it and is pissed because this happened five years ago. Right. And um, basically some waiter, okay, according to the waiter who tweeted about it afterwards, is Kelly Dodd and some other housewife people. I think Vicky was there and maybe a couple other girls. They get to the van, the pump, and she and she asked for like a separate check of just what she ordered. Kelly did. Oh, so that's Kelly annoying pays, right there, though, isn't but it? But I, I talked to Kelly, and there's a backstory oh, okay. to why. Let's hear the backstory. So then she paid for that, and she tipped quite generously on that portion. So, so let's it. say it was eighty bucks. I don't know. She gave a good amount of tip, and she did pay. But then she left. Yeah. And the other girls, according to Kelly, did not pay. Oh. Um, so, you know, what is she supposed to do about that? But, so when this came out, Kelly spent the entire day, she found the receipt from the night at Pump where she did pay for her portion and she did leave a generous tip. Wow. Because I tried to, and so then Lisa Vanderpump then apologized and then she like removed, like they then they both like removed yeah. their stuff. But I was like, you know, because Kelly kind of told me before, because um, I called her, and I was like, what is going on with this? And she said, you know, before this group of girls, they all went to the Abbey, and she picked up that whole check. Okay. So that was like $500. Yeah. Then they go to Pump, and she's like, God, I don't want to be stuck with another $500 bill. Right. So, you know, I've already put 500 into the night. Nobody even threw me 20 whatever, I'm assuming. So uh, we've been there too, where yeah. you're like, now you're going to the third place, and you've already gotten the three rounds. You're like, right? I, I really don't want to spend any more on this, and and I also don't want to have the conversation like, hey, bitches, I paid for there, so can someone get this one? But I probably would do that. But anyway, so um, that's what happened, and I said, well, my God, from now on, I am going to take a photo of every receipt, yeah, what I tipped. And I'm putting it away next to my file. I have two files on my computer. One is eulogy, which is just all the beautiful things people have written about me that oh, can just okay. be read at my funeral. Oh, I'd like to read. Can I read one? Oh, there's so many. Yeah. And then um, it'll be hard to choose. I might yeah. just put it in a book. Okay. You know, people have like photos going at the funeral. Yeah, Mine yeah. will just be oh, like beautiful that. things that people can just sit yeah. back and read and be like, this is weird. Right, right. And then the other one is going to just be that I am a decent tipper. And yeah. then I paid because there's all these TikTokers now that are getting these I've huge followings girl, yeah. of just like outing celebrities. Hey, asshole celebrities part four. Um, okay. So this person, he's a delight. She never looked at me. I tried to bring her an Earl Grey tea. She insisted that she had said mint, which she didn't. So I gave her a two out of 10 stars, bitch. And Can I'm I like, there's no, what are you supposed to do about that? Like, can I tell you my huge tipping story that yes. also turns into very juicy scoop? Please do. Uh, I'm working at Mirabelle Restaurant, 8768 Sunset Boulevard, many, many years ago. This and, is where uh, Megan worked. Yeah, where Princess Megan worked Megan. for a little while, yes. Yeah. And uh, and in comes uh, a guy who looks a little crazy. I didn't uh, initially figure out who it was, but then I, it, it dawned on me. I'm like, oh, this is Phil Spector. <gasps> Phil Spector comes, sits Can at the bar. Can we remind this people is, who Phil Spector is? Yeah, Phil Spector just died recently, but he was a music, he was guy a music producer. Who brought home a girl that I was friendly with. Let me get to it. Okay, go ahead. Was this the night? The night of. This is the night so of. So Sunset, yes. House of Blues is right up the street, from on, on the same side of the street, yes. right up the street. He comes in about 5 p.m. to Mirabelle, gets a Diet Coke. That's mm. it. He wasn't a drinker. And gives me $100, $100 for the Diet Coke. And then walks up to to House of Blues, meets that girl at House of Blues, Lana. kills her that night. He meets this girl, Lana, mm -hmm. who is a beautiful girl who is 40, who is trying to get into stand-up. Yep. And I think she was the hostess at... Did she She was a hostess. She was a there, hostess at House of Blues. She goes home with him to yeah. his weird mansion castle, but like in Arcadia or mm -hmm. something. Like not kind yeah. of a weird look. Like probably the nicest house in the whole town or whatever. And after, you know, he claims after her getting sad, she uh, took a gun and shot herself in the face. Right. And, you know, that was his defense that she decided that night after meeting a stranger that she's going to kill herself with a gun, which right. he looks beautiful and cute. His gun that he his had. His gun. Many and of. then other girls said, oh, my God, I, I'd gone home with him and he loves to put guns in people's mouths and yeah. play these weird games. So the point of your story 
is so important because very one, good tipper. No, but one of okay. my main, like Maya Angelou, Lou sure. quotes. You know how mm-hmm. the her quote is: "When someone shows you who they are, believe you. Yes, believe them." Mine is. There's a million waiters and busboys in L.A. that says, O.J., nicest guy in the world. Yeah. But he still, in my opinion, killed two people. For, uh, agreed. So murderers can be excellent tippers. Yeah. Especially if they're celebrities. Because $100 to them, they're not stupid. Right. $100 means nothing. I mean, overly tip the staff if you're a celebrity. Peter, this is why. I Sometimes I go, holy shit, she knows who I am. It's it's now thirty eighty dollar bill eighty dollar bill how much you tip? Um, always twenty. Twenty. I would yes. go twenty on eighty. That makes it an even hundred. Yes, I just did. Yeah, yeah. twenty. Yes. Okay. But now I'm thinking like maybe go to thirty thirty five percent because I just cannot have someone talk about me like that. And right. what is an extra, you know, ten fifteen dollars to me? Right. And then then you get a TikTok about. What a delight has, you has were. Any, have any of these TikTokers talked about your, you, you're a good tipper. And you I mean, I hope so. Tip, I'm going to be a better one after today. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can give no. you a bad one. Tell me. Quentin Tarantino, like zero, always. He was the worst. Like, he would not tip. Quentin Tarantino's a dick because in the the uh, latest Alan versus, Alan versus Pharaoh thing. Yeah. Um, something I read, an article regarding that, he went on Howard Stern and defended Roman Polanski sleeping with a 13-year-old. He said something like she was oh, a really? mature 13 or something. Yeah. He since apologized. But okay. I think he has a little skew view yeah. on life that's not well, really cool. He so tip. And he doesn't he doesn't care about tipping. Yeah, that's it. Because he wasn't a waiter. He worked at the Blockbuster. Right. You yeah, know, was... There's always a story. <laughs> yeah, Loved yeah. movies, got to watch all the yeah. Blockbusters. Richard Lewis, huge tipper. Comedian Richard Lewis, always fifty dollars, no matter what the check. Could be ten bucks, fifty bucks, always. Nice. Anyone else? Hervé Villachez. Remember the little guy from Fantasy Island? Oh. Came into Mirabelle. He climb was, up on that bar stool. Let me tell you. Yeah, I was his final <laughs> meal. I was his final Wait, meal. Oh my God, this is like a juicy scoop. Hervé Villachez. How am I just hearing the story? At Mirabelle. What I'm did his he waiter. order? He had a big, you know, he had a real size woman with like a, like a, obviously like, I don't know, like a statuesque blonde woman. Yes. They have, they have a meal. His credit card gets declined. Tw- two of them. He gives me two credit cards, both declined. That night, he m- kills himself. Wait, well, he did? Him. He murdered, he shot himself. Okay, well, how did night. he pay though? The I, third I, car I worked? Think, I think the woman picked up the tab. Well, then how did you, why did you say he was a good tipper then? She must have paid for the tab. Well, whatever. The tip was good. But then he went home and, and, and shot himself after two, uh, do you think he shot himself? Don't. Because, don't. No, because he <laughs> he felt so sorry for your sad life working at Mirabelle. No, what? And I was waiting tables. That's All that's right. the way you did it back then. I know, but um, do we do we know why he killed himself? I think he was just depressed. It was you know because was, Fantasy Island was no longer on. Yeah, he had he had. Uh, Wasn't he a huge coke? Person too. I, there's a movie about him on HBO starring the other little person, uh, starring uh, the guy from Game of Thrones. He plays he Survey played Villages. him. Yeah, in a movie on HBO. It's I very good. love uh, movies about like stars that have drug problems because it's always the same kind of story. Like, yeah. it starts little, you know. I mean, well, he was little, but I mean, it starts like in a little small town. Then they get the fame, and then you are, and it's kind of fun to watch because you're like, oh, that's the set of you know fantasy. Did you have any of these type of situations when you were working at Carol O'Connor's place? (laughs) Didn't you work at Carol O'Connor's? I did, (laughs) and I I worked at Carol O'Connor's place. For those of you who don't know, Carol O'Connor played Archie Bunker. Like I don't think any people know. All in the family. Yeah, and he was like a huge star, and he had a a restaurant here. And the, the waiters told me that. He's only keeping this restaurant as like a tax write-off, so it yeah. loses money every year. Okay, right. <laughs> and but it was kind of fancy, and it was in Beverly Hills, and I used to park my car because I couldn't afford the parking in Beverly Hills, so I'd park it near like a fancy house. Yeah, and then I'd be like, Heather, one day you're gonna have that house. I don't think so, because even if I had money, I don't think I want to live in Beverly Hills. But anyway, so, okay, sure. So, <laughs> so I'd walk there. And um, I was an awful waitress. Mm-hmm. And, Were you an actual waitress? Yes. Yeah. Um, I had lied and said I'd worked yeah, my way through college. Yeah. And uh, but then one time they, but they, it was okay because they had runners bring out the food, so yeah. I just plugged it in. And then one other like, can you bring out these plates? And I was like, 
Oh. I don't even know how to carry. That was my that was my number one. I could carry ten plates on like one arm. Like you could do that. that oh God! Thing. Five on one arm, five by. No, I could not. So, uh, the, so I, I one time did such a good job, such a good job yeah. on this table, like probably flawless, and it was like a hundred and fifty dollars, and they left me three dollars. Oh. To the point that the manager ran out after them and just said, "I'm, I'm just wondering," because she was like, "Do I fire this girl?" Yeah, and they're like, "No, everything was great," and I was like, "And the way they pooled the tips so that everyone was just like hated me that day. Like, why did you only make three dollars?" And then the other time, I completely <laughs> fucked up and a now- billion times, and I let got the biggest tip. And then this waiter goes, "You will get the bigger tips if they think you're stressed and they can like see some sweat. People right. feel badly if it's too easy for you, and everyone thing went smoothly. Sometimes you don't get the good tip." And if you're a, fee- a waitress, I always heard a touch, touch like the back, like the shoulder. Oh, you're going to have the steak and touch the shoulder. Your uh, the, tip goes up like 20%. I just remember there was a couple that came every day. At, we opened at 1130. Yeah. They came in 1115. We let them. <laughs> and they worked in insurance, but they both had spouses. Yeah. A guy and a girl. They'd get there. Oh. They'd have two really strong martinis at 1115. It's like heart to heart or yeah, something. And yeah. Would le- and they'd leave in big tips. Then they'd have lunch every day. And um, I was just like, "How the fuck do they go back to work?" I used to. I, we used to have a lot. We had a lot of that. We had a lot of guys who come in and drink f- at work lunch, work lunch. Yeah. Drink five wines, and I'm like, I mean, how could they possibly? It was I a don't different know. time, though. Can I, I tell one more story? Yes, about please do. David Soul, remember him? He was at Starsky and Hutch. Okay. David Soul. So years later, David Soul's down on his luck. He's he's I don't know. He had a hit song at one point. He was he was yeah. the shit in the seventies. Anyway, he used to sit at a bar a lot. We had a lot of you know people whose careers were oh they drank their careers away and yeah. they would sit at the bar all day. David Soul being one of them. Anyway, uh, Ben Stiller remakes uh, does a spoof movie Starsky and Hutch right. right? You know, Owen Wilson Wait, and Ben oh, Stiller right. And then with uh, um and that it wasn't that uh. No, Scarchi- Oh, that's Starsky different. Starsky and Hutch is like I was thinking of Dukes and Hazard. Dukes okay. and Hazard, yeah. But they did they, that they, too with okay. Jessica Simpson. Yeah. But anyway, they do a Starsky and Hutch. Uh, David Soule, they ask him to be in it, like a little uh, cameo, cameo yeah. in it. He only will be paid in cash because he does, he's does. he got about six ex-wives. And he doesn't want any of it to go to his ex-wives. So he says, you pay me cash only. Okay. So David Soule comes in that day in his out. He's done shooting okay. for the day. Now he sits at the bar and he's got a manila envelope with $50,000 in it. That's what he tells me. It is fifty thousand okay. because I take cash only. If you want me in a movie, it's cash only. So okay, okay fair right. enough. You give him his whites and vanilla. He has. <laughs> he has about nine more, and he leaves, and he leaves the manila envelope on the bar, and he's gone. <laughs> I take because he's wasted. He wasted, wasted. Okay, I don't even know you know what yes. he has. What he wasted, and I now I take it, put it behind the register, and I know he'll be back. He must be freaking out at this point. He's fifty thousand dollars is gone. <laughs> He called, you know, he comes back in you know, three hours later. Hey, what's the envelope in here? Now he's waiting. I think yeah. he went to nine more bars up the street yeah, and he came yeah, back yeah. in, like, oh, yeah. where's my envelope? And I'm like, calm, Hutch, Starsky, but I don't know which one you want. <laughs> calm that we have your envelope. And he went, thank you very much, and walked out. But anyway, so he, uh, if I was a prick, I could have stolen his $50,000 and yes. said, we didn't see it. It's gone. But I didn't. Of course you <laughs> yeah, did. Yeah, I know. I'm How just, could you live with some yourself? Some people would have. Well, did he tip you very well? I don't even know if he, but he would come in every day, so he was he wasn't a bad tipper. I know, but I just think if someone would have given me that, yeah, he would have given like, me like hundred like bucks. bucks. But hey, I think he re- he needed every penny of that fifty thousand. Did you see the movie? I did. And how was he in it? He's, you know, he was, he, was, he they give, I think they probably wanted him in it longer, and they both Ben Stiller probably realized that he can't do this anymore. Let me see if what else I want to do. Anyway. Um, this story is very sad um, because Kim Richards, you right. know, this is Paris Hilton's mom is Kathy Hilton. Sure. Uh, Kyle Richards and Kim were both original of Beverly Hills Housewives. And Kim has four baby daddies. She's married very, very wealthy. She's got a cra- crazy life. She's struggled with drug and alcohol. She's been caught after her fame uh, stealing from Target. Oh, no. She's been arrested at the Polo Lounge in the last five years. She was on Dr. Phil. She got a book deal. So everyone's creaming in their pants, and they just cut it. They just said, keep the $300,000. you are too Why? much of a nightmare. I don't oh, know. Work, yeah. We don't know. We don't know if she was. it was so juicy that her sisters were then like, I. this is what I think happened. I'm the publisher, Yeah. and I meet crazy Kim Richards. And 
I'm like, this is gonna be the greatest book. She kept, she kept, she kept leaving one husband for another husband who was a, an heir. One of the love of her life was shot in front of my place, favorite place, Brent's Deli in Northridge. Oh, really? And he was part of like a uh, Ponzi scheme. Okay. And nobody knows whoever killed him. But then Josh Flagg told me on our trip to Cabo who yeah. did. Oh, you can't say? I, I can't say. Okay. But... but it has nothing to do with the Ponzi scheme. Yeah. According to Josh Flagg's source. Yeah. So uh, we're so excited, Kim. Now, Kim is a mess. We've watched her on the show. So I imagine a lot of canceled meetings, a lot of Zooms that she can't work. Yeah. Okay. And uh, ghost writers, one ghost writer said, um, you owe, you owe me five thousand dollars from the three hundred thousand that you already got. She has three hundred thousand advance, and the ghost writer's only getting five. So wow. that she had to sue her just to get the five. She got the five. Okay. And then what I think happened is, the sisters got a hold of what was going to be in the book. Yeah. And then their people started to send some like threatening letters, like ah, uh, you know, just know that if that if you print that story about. The three of us in Vegas, whatever, or this, yeah. or our husbands, or this or that, or the fight, you know, that's not true, and you know, all this legal shit. Yeah. And meanwhile, it keeps getting postponed, and then they kind of think and they go, God, well, if we can't tell this story and this story and this story, because all these people that she's going to talk about are still powerful people, what story is there? Yeah. It's... Just fuck it, we're out. Keep your three hundred thousand. That's what I think happened. Wow. Was she the one who was in the movies as a child, like Escape yes. from Witch Mountain and stuff? Yes. Okay. She was the biggest, yeah. yeah she was and uh, her story was going to be about how, like, she kind of had to support the whole family because the two other sisters worked, but nothing like Kim Richards. Yeah. And then the mom really was about putting her daughters out there and marrying as wealthy as you can and as rich as you can and get a baby no matter what. Right. And um, Kyle married really wealthy, her first husband, and had one daughter, but then fell out of love and then met, like, uh, Mauricio and they both had no money yeah. and now they have this like fabulous life and marriage and three more daughters and like and then Kathy Hilton married Hilton and they've stayed married this whole time Yeah. and then Kim had oh my god a different like I can't remember all the names but all these different baby daddies and different husbands and fiancés and they one was richer than the next and they're all like old money like heir trust fund people Yeah. and so it would have been amazing but I think she can't leave. I think too many won't, people won't are trying to shut to, it down. Won't it just go to another, uh, you know, book company now? Won't they? Won't I, take it? I think uh, no other book company will. I think the book company, yeah. if someone else wants it, would call up me, right. publisher of her company, and goes, "Hey, Heather, just give me the scoop. Well, right. What happened with nice. the kid? I'll say there's no way. The legally, I mean, it's just like all these people. She won't. We can't talk about the her. You know, her being with Davies. That's like right. this other." Big person she was with. We can't talk about the guy being murdered in front of Heather's favorite restaurant, Brent's Deli. Yeah. We can't. It's just like forget it. Okay. But people are heartbroken. I yeah. I don't even it know. But we it want like a... to know the truth. Yeah. And we're never going to find out. This last topic you brought to me. I brought to you yes, yeah, because I don't want you to be left out. You know, in yes. the lurch, not knowing the hot fashion. And what is it, Chris? Explain. Uh, well, according to uh, you know some some sources, the hot new fashion the, for the celebrities is a large water bottle. A lot like of people enormous. like enormous. Like it like almost a, looks like, like a gallon. It almost looks like what you have, like you know the guys that used to bring yeah. the sparklets water. It's like a jug. Like of, it's literally that yeah. large. Yeah. And why? What kind of flexing is this? I, like, don't call me thirsty. I really am hydrated. Look how big my water I is. I think so. I, well, look, the, you're seeing pictures now of of, uh, of um, Dakota Johnson, Kendall Jenner, uh, who else? Uh, Juliana Huff. They all have gigantic bottles of water. Wow. So if you guys out there listening want to be a part of uh, you know the hot trend, I suggest you get yourself. And they're okay. Go even bigger. And they're okay that they're plastic bottles of water. That no one's have, mad about that. I, I'm sure that'll come because that, there. I thought you were going to show me those ones that are metal, silver, or yeah. whatever, and they are like three normal bottles of water in one, like a thermostat or not thermostat. Thermos. <laughs> Thermos. Thermos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these are just like full blown plastic. Like this is going to take up half your fridge. Yeah. Those <laughs> thermoses used to be used strictly for hot soup. <laughs> if you wanted. <laughs> If you want to take your soup from one location to the next. Or if you want to have your shrimp soup in the bathroom 
at the General Mills. I always factory. remember like this. My Superman's hot. I'm like, who is? If she would have kept, if she would have put her shrimp, going back to the beginning of the show, <laughs> in a hot thermos, thermos, she wouldn't have had to heat no. it up and then eat it in the bathroom. She could just <laughs> ate it at her. Everybody, at her desk at everybody the Everybody was carting around hot soup when I, in the thermos always. The soup stays hot. In the little cup. <laughs> oh, boy. I've never had more fun on, on an episode of... And last the, topic, oh, please, is J-Rod and... I mean, is A-Rod and J-Lo together or not? I'm so sick of the breakup, not broken up. Break it up. Now, now they're back together to sell... Jolie uh, vitamins. Yeah. It is and all it, over my Facebook wall. Like I'm getting this ad like crazy. This is Goli it for people ad. of a certain age? What is it? I think it's a, it's a many things. It's a sex. It, it, it enhances your sex. Uh, oh. I read. I, that's one of the things I read. Uh, it's basically apple cider vinegar, whatever that does. You know, that's like the hot new apple cider vinegar. Everybody. I thought celery juice was the hot new thing. Is it celery juice? You're supposed to have celery juice in the morning, and then I guess I guess you have, now you're gonna have a hot cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. So that that's their new thing. They are plugging this goalie. Um, so she vitamin. He writes, uh, "It's official. We are part of the goalie gummy family. So yeah. you eat these gummies." Jennifer and I are very excited to announce that we've joined forces with Goalie Nutrition. They've revolutionized the health and wellness industry with their innovative, delicious, and nutritious gummies. Helps reduce body weight, reduce stress and tension, supports physical endurance. Does uh, it keep you from FaceTiming? Helps, um, helps support sexual function and much more. So maybe that's their whole storyline. Maybe that's like it. I. I couldn't get it up in real life with J Lo, so I had to FaceTime Madison Lacroix, and then I got goalie of yeah of Southern Charm, and I would whack off to her on FaceTime, but I never met her in person. Then we discovered goalie gummies, yeah, and together we don't need a D list reality star from Bravo to spice things up. Now we got goalie gummies. Yeah, that's interesting though. Is that what he, they're saying he did? He just whacked off to her via like a Say She said we fit, we only FaceTimed, but then she would drop hints that maybe they had met. Right. But she also said she signed an NDA that was, in. now we know that was filmed on one of the shows, but it was removed because, yeah. again, these are the same type of scary people that will keep Kim Richards' books from coming to light. Yeah. So I think um, she said it was just a, you know, a, and we never met in person. Oh, okay. But who is talking to a girl on FaceTime? If you're just a fan of the show, yeah. sometimes you DM other celebrities and you're like, oh my God, I love the show, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's great. Right. So funny. What what, what restaurant was that in, in Charlotte? Oh, it was this. Okay, that's it. To go, let me get your phone number. Because you can't right. FaceTime on Instagram, like unless it's live to the world. Can you? I think you can. I don't no, know. No, no. I don't know. You, you know, they exchanged phone numbers. Yeah. And then FaceTimed. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But they're they're back together now. J Lo and and uh, I mean to sell these A-Rod. gummies. And why? Do you, how much more products and shit do I you know. need, J Lo? Is it? Does anybody ever just go? You know what? I'm good. I know. I don't want to cheapen really, the brand or whatever. Yeah, like, I don't really want to do a post today. Yeah. I just I'm like fine. And A Rod like, too. A Rod signed like two like three hundred million dollar contracts when he was a baseball player. I think he's fine. I think people just love the fame. That's why I think Sharon Osbourne is going to have a difficult time going away. Yeah. Because it isn't like, well, I'm 68. I have so many millions. Let me just be a grandma. I'm thrilled. Okay. No. It's like, no, I like the limelight. Yeah. And I'm going to freak out. Well, Chris, you're going to be in Dallas. Do you have any other shows besides your show every this Thursday, weekend, cover to cover? Please, this podcast. weekend, as you guys listen to this Go get your tickets to where? Spokane Comedy Club in Spokane, Washington. Yes. I'm there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then I go to Cleveland, Ohio. Hilarities in Cleveland. Oh, with the nicest guy in the, the world. The nicest guy in the world, yes. Yes, Nick. the uh, guy who owns it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, that is the 15th, 16th, and 17th of April. Please come to these shows now, so I can I sell you, out like Heather McDonald does. I know you like a boring coffee. But oh. I'm telling you, the, the best coffee shop is in the hotel that they put you at. Oh, I've had it. At the bottom. The weird hotel with the gorgeous... Yes, uh, you got to get your coffee there every yeah. day. And go a little bit out of the box. Like as far as what? I don't know. They do coffee? this latte with honey and almond milk, and I don't know why it tastes so good. But there's been times when I I didn't really want to go back there, and I went just so that I could go get that coffee every day. 
Oh, okay. I had a turmeric latte yesterday. I didn't like that for going out of the box. How I can't believe that you did. In Malibu, I had a turmeric latte, and uh, you know who was next to me in line? And he's very skinny and very handsome. Uh, the guy who used to be married to Brooke Burke, David oh, Charvet. From Charvet? Yes. Something like that. Yes. He was He was in line. There. The, I always see them in Malibu. Yeah. They're very not, handsome. Obviously, they're not together anymore, but they had four kids, I think. Yeah. He's one of those guys you look at and you go, oh, of course he's a uh, got to be on Baywatch. What he's did a, he order? Did he order the turmeric and then you got it thinking no, that I, all of a sudden you'd grow cheekbones or what? <laughs> I wish. I mean, the guy had like perfectly quaffed Oh, head. my God. His face like is stunning. like 9 a.m. too. I mean, everything about him was like perfect. He is perfect. Yeah. But she's perfect too, but they didn't... It, not enough to make it Not last. Not enough to make it last. Exactly. Even the most gorgeous couples that like J Lo and A Rod. Yeah. Doesn't matter. In the end, you wind up selling vitamins on Facebook. You know. Just like everybody else. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Like, aren't you ever like, aren't I kind of better than this? I, that's what I when I heard they were doing gold. Because honestly, no, I'm sure the deal is enormous. Oh but yeah, still. but Goalie asked me to promote their stuff. They, I got an email from Goalie. That like, has hey. your sex life improved? <laughs> not, a, not, but the turmeric helps. <laughs> Chris, you go to Frangiola. Frangiola.com has all my dates. Come to Spokane and, and yes. Dallas and, and Cleveland and Cover to Cover is my podcast. And thank you so much for having me on Juicy Scoop because I say all the time it, it helps me to sell tickets and yes, have a life. Yes, the Juicy thank Scoopers you. are the best. Yeah. Like, I know, even when leaving Dallas, they're like, thank you for the greatest weekend we've ever had. Yeah. Because everybody is so sweet. They now, are the some best. of my girls, I will say, some of my young moms. They're so excited to get be there, and sometimes they, you know, have been breastfeeding back to back three kids. Yeah, uh huh. And it's cup. Sometimes it's even worse because they even go on a girls trip. They leave. They yeah. stay at a hotel. I know. Oh, I've I've had it. I've and, dealt with them. And they're so excited, mm -hmm. and they have so much fun, and they get a little too drunk, and they're like so happy to meet me, and they're crying and everything. And I think it's fine, but I go next tomorrow they're gonna write me they're gonna say i'm sorry and it. exactly that happened oh did it they said we were the mom's gone wild we got too drunk we were dying we're hanging out hung over we're driving home now you know back yeah. to their lives with their breast pumps and stuff and i just said it's f i get it yeah i get it but honestly that the fact that i know that you're driving home and regret it the next day that hurts me more right than it actually hurt you Right. So don't do that to me. Don't make me feel badly that you feel badly. Just yeah. keep it to a few cocktails. Don't start too early, girls. Yeah, but they're just excited. They're I mean, you've so created that type of they're uh, very excited, you know, that, that and type I love of it. Party world, which is a fun place to be in. I had another group, not these girls. Another group that um, I found out later they had to step outside, and then they were crying and they were fighting with each other because they were talking too much. Yeah. And I mean, they didn't get to see the end of my hilarious act. I can't oh, take this kind of Catholic guilt. I know. People don't drink too much. Um, but anyway, it was very fun. Go to Go the early Chris. show and drink after. That's what I think. If you, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're going to a late show, start with your first cocktail at dinner. Right. Not at four o'clock. Okay. So I like there you that. go, people. Juicy anyway. Scoopers. Little word of wisdom for you. Love you. Oh, okay. What else? I just was going to, I'll save it for Thursday, my other okay. topic. All right. Love you. Bye. Bye.